Good morning, folks. Two days ago, we saw an M8 solar flare, and we were able to note a potential Earth-directed CME on SOHO. The annual spiral shows that eruption due to impact Earth tonight, but it should be relatively weak. Then, last night, we took another strong M flare. Same two central groups involved, yet another radio blackout was produced. This, too, appears to have surged a wide surface area and somewhat cleared the corona. That's two large M flares the last two days, and we're starting early this morning with an M1. Unfortunately, SOHO is not well updated for last night's eruption. Look at the timestamp below. But luckily, the C3 images do show the expanding CME cloud, and if you can spot that wide field of ejecta, you'll recognize a near halo and another probable Earth-directed CME. That makes two coming in Earth's direction. Neither is terribly large, but magnetic storms are very possible. And if the first arrives tonight with the telemetry of the solar wind this calm, we'll have a great opportunity to observe the effects of the impact on our magnetic systems. The sunspots continue to be magnetically complex. I'd say both of these big groups are definitively delta class at this point. The mixing of positive and negative here is as good as we've seen in weeks. We also note the southern negative coronal hole faces Earth today, likely sets a stream along which those CMEs will travel. Heading to the islands west of Africa where Pico de Fogo has been letting loose. We reported the evacuations there in late November when it began erupting, and it appears those were a terrific idea. The lava flows have completely enveloped and destroyed two villages and more acres of farmland than they can get to to quantify. There is no reason to think this disaster will be over anytime soon. How about a different spectrum of chaos? This is Japan. 11 people are dead and there are 81 inches of snow in some areas which is approaching 7 feet tall. Watch closely here. The latest drought look shows a touch of improvement out west from the storms, but they also have a long, long way to go to get back to normal. We'll also check out the ice extents, with the Arctic below the 30-year average, but still very much recovered from those lowest years. Down south, Antarctica shattered the all-time high ice marks earlier this year, but took a dip down before breaking back upwards the last few weeks to near record levels once more. In North America, we see that western system continuing to push precipitation at the coastline, while cold air continues rushing down the western side of the northeastern low. In addition to that frigid air, please note the hooking convergence. It actually goes from eastern Canada down across the southern states and Mexico all the way south of Hawaii. How's that for a cloud line? It crosses right over top of a surface air convergence, right where the mobile observatory is this morning, and we've got some storms on the way. Same out west, with snow to the north remaining. Southern nations in Europe get a bit of a breather as the moisture flow and storm conditions stick to the convergence off the northern low. Just look at the moisture delivered down that line in purple. No surprises when you see the clouds. Pressure overlay shows lows to the south, between nations, and in northern Australia. The temperature overlay up, we can see the convergence over water here while the cresting line up to the west remains. The flow will reach New Zealand overnight. Mobile Observatory Projects in Shreveport, Louisiana today. Check out observatoryproject.com for details. We would love to see you out at the Science Center. Site remodeling is ongoing at suspiciousobservers.org. I know it looks very different already, but the nuanced changes are still in the works. Thank you for your patience and support. Got current conditions and spectacular shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.20 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.